Welcome to the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Browning Firearms, the best there is, Realtree Outdoors, Swarovski Optic, Browning Ammo, and Banded Waiters. Here's your host, Caleb Wallace, Cole Barthel, and Kyle Bearfield. Everything good? Josh leaving Thursday morning or tomorrow night? He's leaving tomorrow night at midnight. So we're in line. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Kyle's pushed the record button, so Does if you don't want it said. I, I called down there. We may be in a little bit of trouble. They don't know if you can drive in or not, like drive into your booth. To load, to unload, and load. We don't need to. Delta. Y'all don't, but some people do. We need to. <laughs> Y'all's is pretty easy to get in. Is Devin going with him or somebody else going? Yeah, we got a few folks. Yeah. Ours is is pretty pretty easy. easy. Sweet I mean, you, you, the more people you get, the more of a pain. Josh is pretty come. organized with that. Oh, yeah. He does a good job with everything. that part. So, if y'all got some experience in it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. What time can we expect you to be in the booth? When? At Delta Water Fire. Signing autographs. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'll be there. It opens at noon. I'll be able to make that. Yeah, I'll make noon. I think it's one. What about noon. Saturday? Saturday's, Saturday's at it night. I noon. think Saturday's eight thirty nine 9 o'clock deal. You, you want to tell you what Birmingham was last weekend? What? On Friday. These were the hours. We went 3 to 9 Friday night. Saturday night we went ten to eight. Sunday night we went ten to six. Oh, that's 10 to terrible! That's, that's brutal. Closing Sunday at nine. Was the last day. Uh, yeah, but Friday night we went to nine o'clock. But you don't even drink, so nine o'clock. So it was that's bad. True. Saturday morning nine o'clock at the Delta Waterfowl booth. I guarantee you, Christian will have a conference call or something. Mm-hmm. You know, there'll be a reason he can't be there for the time being. So we'll make sure of that. Maybe me too. <laughs> Well, no, you work for Simmons. You got to <laughs> like be there. Yeah. Yeah, I got all kinds of hydration supplements we're going to have to take. But uh, I'll kick us kick off. Us welcome. Off, okay, welcome back to the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting Podcast. We got a got a special guest here on the kind of on the hills of Delta Waterfowl Expo down in Baton Rouge and Christian Curtis from he is the what do you say social chairman? Social chairman. Social chairman, head bartender. Yep. Uh does some sales, some product design. Yeah, yeah. That sp- speaks multi languages. Social uh, chairman's the main thing, though. A man of many hats yep. at uh, at Banded Holdings, which, if some of y'all don't know, also has a consists of Avery uh, Greenhead Gear, Avery Sporting Dog, and Taka. And now Taka, now, now Taka, right. yep. which is yep has been a has been a success for us here at Summer Sporting Goods. Well, it was a success for. Whoever won that deal last year? Yeah, Christian. Christian oh, opened up his success. Christian opened up his mouth uh, before our big book last year and said, "You know, if if whoever wins the ten thousand dollars shopping spree is wearing Taka in their picture, picture for the big buck contest, they get ten thousand dollars cash from Taka." And sure enough, I mean, what what were the chances? I, I agree with you. Now we tried to make sure we're like, hey. I know. All you got to do is get you one of taco jackets, get go you a hat, it, ta- yeah. get yeah. all your stuff, and go take your picture in your taco. Yeah. And we called that guy's name, and the picture came. We had it kind of of a behind-the-scenes yeah. deal of the picture so that we would know, you know, when we were announcing the winner, what they'd have. And Christian was back there looking. When that picture popped up, <laughs> all the color yeah. drained out of his face <laughs> like yep. he had seen a ghost. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not a gambler, and boy. I still remember seeing that. I think he was sick of his stomach pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ten grand. Yeah. But you got uh, a happy. But hey. You got he, a, you he, got honor, a happy, he honored what he said he, he was going to He stuck to his word, and you it got was, a happy talk of customer. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So, so yeah, you, that was a good deal, though. Probably so, do it again this year. How many bucks were entered in it, Caleb, you think? Over a 1,000? I wish you'd ask me to get this info before you put me on the spot while we're recording. Just make uh, up yeah, a number. I, over, I'm going to say, yeah, over a thousand. Over a thousand. Yeah, over there a thousand. you go. That sounds good. You know, probably easily with all the categories and also. I mean, it's pretty, I actually do know. What's the number? 1236. Tw- there you go. Over, a little over a thousand, like I said, 1236. <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> 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 it sounded good. I was going out of 1236, we sold 900 and something mm-hmm. tops mm-hmm. and uh, tops and hats. So. 
odds of him not paying the ten grand dwindled down. Mm-hmm. Cole said y'all were going to do like twenty thousand this year. I mean, you real split tree. It real tree. Yeah. Yeah. They were going. They do must 10. be going to do it. Yeah. Y'all were going to do ten. Maybe. What's Jeff going to do? Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all talk to him about that. Take twenty. Take twenty. He's just gonna wear it. I'm not gonna say no, or it. Make the winner go ahead. The, the winner gonna have to pay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. He's gonna. What's he gonna do? Take twenty. Yeah. He'll come out the winner somehow, some way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, while we got you here, give us a little backstory. Uh, and some of us know. I mean, you I know, guess, I, I why I you know got me briefly. here. I'm here every day and. Yes, I know that. Now invited me for this. But you've I, been ducking so, us. So don't we make like. don't make it sound like you've been, since you're here in town today. Yeah, but it's like getting you, like holding you down oh, okay, to, to okay, actually okay. do something. Got you. You're a busy man. Got you. No, yeah. And I will say he may commit, and then something may come up. That's happened something once or twice. Come up. On this? No, no. Now if you have a cooking with him. Yeah. If you if you yeah. have a cooking and a yeah. drinking, yeah. he's in. See, if we did the, the and Tim, yeah. we need next time we do this, we're going to do this your outdoor kitchen at the pool house. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have, may have a weekly show if we do that. Oh, yeah, we could. Um, But anyways, back to what I was going to ask. Can Bandit, you not hear it anymore? It just muffled. Yeah, it's all right. Banded now is what, a 15-year-old company? Mm. Man, I think 12. 12. And it says okay. I think, but I'm serious. I the older we get, the more time. Flies but you know how, by. like old people, like my grand grandpa, they could tell you, like, man, in April of forty-seven, I was. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember what yeah. I did in April of yeah. twenty-one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. But anyway, no, I yet. think I think we're twelve. Nineteen forty-seven, April of twenty-fifth. There yeah. was a cool front that yeah, day. Yeah, it was exactly. cold. It's crazy. Yeah, we no, was, I think we're we 12. were white perch fishing, and like, huh? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell you what we did last week. Um. So, anyways, twelve. 12-ish 12 years, years old. Mm-hmm. And so where did, where did the idea to start the company, where did, that, where did it come from? Well, just essentially, I mean, back back then, um, I worked for Avery. Me and the guys that started it, we all worked for Avery. And Avery, we got interested in clothing. <clears throat> we saw a huge opportunity because at that time, Drake was the only game in town, right? Sure. I mean, that was it. Mm-hmm. And um, we thought, you know, there's some things that at that time it was the what equator fleece deal, yep. you know. What I mean, yep. and that yep. was like it's like that was essentially all there was. Man, we can uh, Eric and I started going overseas and doing some product development with Avery, but it was all hard goods at that time because that's all Avery did. Sure. We're like, man, we can do this clothing deal. <clears throat> so. We just did it, yeah. you know. We just finally saw said, an hey, opportunity. Yeah, make, we just said we're gone. We're, we gotta go do make our own some deal. better, yeah, better products and yep, and, and, and we roll on. Yep, and uh, we did that, and um, eventually we we, you know, I think the the key to any business is you find a you got to find a problem. You get, if if there's a problem to solve, then you there's a business opportunity. If there's not a problem to solve, then you're just right. Better have a lot of marketing money. You're just marketing. You're just paying for clicks and knocking somebody off and whatever. But at that time, there was a problem solving. It was waiters, in our opinion, that neoprene waiters sucked. They weren't comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, they just – and we're like, there's a better way to do this and stay warm. So we started – we started – came up with an insulated breathable waiter. And um, it's crazy. That's, I guess, 12 years ago. Um, We figured out how to do that. You know, it it took – Obviously, it takes time to, to – when you're on the forefront of stuff, trying to figure out how to do it, you know, you have failures and, and you have you have wins and you have losses. And, and uh, anyway, figure out how to do it. And, and, I mean, I don't know. You all duck hunt. I think – I don't think I'm overstepping saying this. We went from a one-year-old company to the biggest – I don't know – yeah, the biggest the waiter biggest, brand in, yeah. in America in three right. years. Right. It was quick. <clears throat> yeah, no it doubt. just it blew up. I mean, so so we we the problem we we saw and isolated it truly was a problem, and we found a solution for it, and then we just took off. So uh, now you know there's everybody's doing T- the same thing TM now. Plus companies probably. Yeah, right yeah, everybody's doing it. Yeah. So, um, but y'all got a newer one. 
We got a Coming new this year. A new room. I mean, we're man, we're always if you're not if, if you're not if you're sitting there. I've always said though, listen, in waterfowl, the waiter would be the most miserable plus most rewarding thing to ever come to go if you're starting a waterfowl company coming out with a waiter that does not sound fun no oh no no because i mean here's the thing the truth is you take your lumps because you're going to have a certain amount of failures that's yeah. just all there is to it and you know industry standards three four percent um and we took a lot of lumps for a while because you know it, it was a numbers game three percent of forty five thousand pair of waiters is a lot different than three percent of one thousand pair of waiters. So sure, and, and when you have three percent, three percent, you got a lot of people Blue. that you got uh, fifteen hundred waiters versus thirty waiters, right? And, and so yeah, so and then you know extrapolate that over four or five years. So anyway, you get a lot of bad press and and yeah. the people and, that like it don't really talk. The people that have a oh issue yeah, you don't hear about the, the ones, you know yeah. the, you don't hear about you get wine. yeah right. you hear it's about the, the, and the well and the, and and the people that want to get famous on TikTok. I mean, I'll just say what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. it, I, I don't know how many people use a negative something to try to. Or even make it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but, yep. no, there, the point being, with waiters, there's going to be an inherently certain amount of failures. I mean, it's a, par- a piece of fabric and you're standing in water, okay? There's inherently a certain amount of failures, and – it piece of, a piece of fabric that's already had a needle go through yeah. it to stitch yeah. it together. And, yeah. and and we evolve. We come up with you know we start with the first waiter. We evolve. We come up with new fabrics, um, new ways to put them together without stitching. Uh, there's just a lot you can do. And, and well, we tr- there's not a lot you can do, but we try to we push it to do the most that we can do. Mm-hmm. We try to stay up with the new fabrics, the new seam seal methods, the new fits. New boot technology, but it's it's really like, man, you only have so in the beginning since the beginning of waiters. I don't know what was way back in the day. What I mean, was, when I was a when I was a kid, it was a lacrosse canvas waiter. Or yeah, a, well, let's go back. See, that's because I'm older than you. Go back before right. that, and it was rubber, like Northerners. Right. I don't know if you remember those. So it's like there's there's they went from rubber. To canvas, like the old red balls you're talking mm-hmm. about, red ball canvas, to neoprene, and then bam, it went to breathable. Right. And and that's where we are now. And I don't think it'll. Well, you, you probably said we probably said when we got neoprene, it probably never changed from that. But I don't think it'll change from breathable for a good while because they're so comfortable. Right. And we've learned, and and the clothing is so much better underneath them. Hundred percent. Now we we pretty much you know we're now we're mostly selling uninsulated because we got so much premium loft and clothing underneath that you don't right. get cold. Right. So <clears throat> I don't know what the next evolution will be. I mean it'll it'll be some sort of fabric deal, you know. And waiters are so man, it's it's such a tough game. People unfairly, for the most part, think that they they should be bulletproof. I think and. and that started a long time ago with these li- lifetime warranties. I mean, if you if you think about it critically and logically, a lifetime warranty on a pair of waders is absolutely crazy. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. no doubt. It, it, it's crazy because yeah, you talk about fabric, and then like Kyle said, you had the stitching when they were stitched. The needles already gone through, <laughs> and then you're not. You're not standing in a freaking swimming pool. You're Bust, walking through briars, stobs, jumping ice, barbed wire fences, some fences, well, riding a four wheeler. We don't like to poach when we duck hunt, Kyle. But whatever, <laughs> you do you. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're yeah, riding a four wheeler, getting in and out of a one of my favorite or leaving them in the back favorite, of a truck all duck season. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite banded waiter uh, tear stories, a buddy of mine. Was just bragging on, man, this is the second year of these bandies. I love them, blah, 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 blah. And he's sitting on the front of my boat, and we're easing up to a flooded hole in my farm. And he's sitting right there on the corner. And when he eases off, it's deeper than he thinks. And the front of that boat caught the crotch of that waiter and tore it. But when it did, it hooked him, like, right behind the crack of his butt. Like, up, like so the front of the boat was in between. First. Yeah, so it's in between his waiters and his drawers there. And he's face first flopping with his hands in the water. I'm trying to get my phone out. He's hollering help. I'm trying to get my phone out and take a pie. I about let him drown before I could get a picture and then pull him back in real quick. That's great. 
So, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of different things you can do to – to tear them like yeah. i said that's probably one of the hardest things in the whole outdoor oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. industry yeah. and, and clothes i'm not well, clothing, it's crazy you. it's like the whole i don't know where it got jacked up man but the whole entire waiter thing is like man i ain't paying x amount i'm not paying 500 dollars for a pair of waiters with don't only a three-year warranty now. right don't even mention and man that. it's like man where did this go sideways where did, what happened you know you, you like I need like, you like the, a sociologist to like look at the waiter like the history and figure what where did where did this happen what happened because I looked at one time last year I was so perplexed by this and try to figure out like the psychology of what goes on with it right and I looked up you know you know what a dry suit is like combat swimmers wear it and Navy SEALs yeah, wear them yeah, like not a wetsuit but yeah, a dry yep, suit yep absolutely okay. Okay, if you look at you look up a dry suit, okay, a, a waterproof breathable dry suit online. It's like a body glove. No, 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 no. I'm it's not tied at all. Suit, it's but go just ahead, like go ahead. a pair of waders. Okay, it's a dry suit. Okay, it's it's basically a pair of breathable waders that have sleeves and have booty foot, booty feet, and have a a deal with a neoprene hood. Right? It, it's a pair of it's uh, yeah. it's that's it, what it is. And I'm like, you know, and like. They swim in them, right? They're not wading. They're not. They're, they're they're swimming in them. They get dropped off in the in the, 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 in the ocean, ocean in, in in Alaska, off the coast of Alaska. They're swimming in them. Oh, the the reputable ones are like five grand, and they have a one year warranty. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And they're and they have tough. sleeves. Yeah. That's the difference, and no boots. One year warranty. One year warranty. And like you said, they're swimming they're in swimming. the salt water. It's not yeah. like they're going through the yeah through the brush <laughs> or the you know rice. No, I think it's a very unfair critique on the waiter. Part. And do you think if it's a very... if a Coast Guard rescue sim- swimmer has got a brand new suit, and as he's sitting on the edge of a helicopter getting ready to jumps out jump out, he rips it. Do you think he calls the company and says, "Hey, man, I just bought this thing yesterday and ripped it." It's, a, it's super unfair when it comes to that. But uh, hey, but, it is what it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. It, I mean, you say they that you don't make waiters. Them. You're exactly right. He does. You made the no. Comment. Anyway, I, I showed you a few years ago where I kicked a T post, and the shield part of the front of the waiter caught the brunt, and it did what it's supposed to do. It tore, but it moved, and it didn't tear the inside. Yeah. But I remember the comment you made was, I, I was impressed. I was like, Hey, look, I kicked a T post. It didn't go through. It doesn't leak. And you said, Yeah, but. Average person would walk in here and return them and say they were they were like that when yeah when, when they got them <laughs> yeah we don't have to talk about that but I couldn't I can only imagine what these dealers face when people bring them in and this and that you and know what that. they face these dealers they don't face nothing they say Christian <laughs> send, them, send in another pair because I just credited them another that's what pair. I do yeah, exactly. I'm like, hey, what man, do they face man these waiters leak I'm like hey, let's get you another pair we'll send a man will take care of that. Yeah. We got an inside connection there. We got the hook up. Yeah, just drop them on. We'll get you. Drop go up there and get you another pair up there. We no. got you. Yeah, if you if you want to return waiters, just go to Jeff's desk and he'll return them for you all day long. Yeah. So, <laughs> how long after Banded did y'all reacquire Avery, which was a brand y'all were all familiar um, with because you worked there? Man, there so, here we go in dates again. I don't. Probably three, about, three four years later. Yeah, probably, probably about. Probably about six years ago. Yep. Maybe five years into the deal. And with with Avery came Greenhead Gear mm-hmm. and Avery Sporting Dog, right? That's right. right. Yep. Right. Yep. Now, we when you first – correct me if I'm wrong, but when you first worked for Avery, didn't the whole Avery crew get – Jeff kicked the whole Avery crew out of the store? Uh, I mean, if you heard him say that. If you okay. ask him, yeah, that's right. That's where I, heard, that's where I got yeah. my info from. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, you had to come back in here with a bandit hat on. Yeah, if you ask him, then you then bought Avery, and then Avery got let back in. Yeah, that's how yeah. that. Yeah, that's what how he that said. all went. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, and yeah. then just here recently, I guess last year was the first year of Taka, which we've already covered. Yep, that's that. a, our new big game, or really, whitetail line. Whitetail big game line. Which yeah. ta- and Taka is Sioux for deer, right? It's uh, Lakota. Yeah, Lakota yeah. for deer. Yeah, yeah it's deer. pretty cool. <clears throat> Crazy horse. We we had a. Our, our, if you look at our logo, it's like an arrowhead, and I didn't come up with that, but I think it's pretty cool. It is. No, it, it is. is. It's, super, it's a good-looking logo, and everything, the gear's good, and we've enjoyed it. We really enjoyed you paying 10000 extra dollars. Yeah, I know. That was fun. I know. She'll yeah. be back next year. Do what? She'll be back. Yeah. Gained a customer. 
Yeah. Ten yeah. grand. It wasn't a she, it was a he. Yeah. Or a he. Mm-hmm. It, now so, there was. So did you. Yeah. Cole gained a customer too. So oh, there was, I did too. I there paid was for a it customer too. On, on that day. I, I, I paid for it too. That had on a uh, had on some taco gear that was in mossy oak, and so Cole tells her, it's like, hey, if you'll, uh, won't you go pick you out? I'll get you another jacket. Won't you pick you out a real oh, tree jacket? About yeah, won't you yet. pick you out a taco jacket? Real tree's gonna pay for it. Get it, you know, in real tree. He didn't say just a jacket. He said, go pick you out. Some pick stuff. you out. I said, pick you out top something. and bottom. I said a top and bottom. <laughs> she got a jacket, bibs, mid <laughs> layer, up under top, layer, bottom, top. Half. She showed at him. Twelve hundred dollars. Oh, comes, and that was at cost. Cole comes to me. He's like, Caleb, this is twelve hundred dollars. Like you told her to pick out mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, hey, the girl's a good shopper. I like it. What are you going to do now? Yeah. He's like, what are we going to do? I was like, we ain't going to do anything. <laughs> we are going to charge it to you. That's what we, we're going to do. And we paid for it. And I heard about it. So that was good. And I heard about it. <laughs> but it all worked out. No, so after that, after the, so the talking came out. I mean, and basically, here we are today. This is where we're at. With uh, where are we going here with Cole's, this, the color on Cole's hat right there? Yeah. We can. So it's pretty good. We can. So brand new this year, which will will only be available in banded Mm-mm. Avery Taco stuff. No. Nope. That's not true. Be some other brands Frog too. Dog. Frog Togs will have it as well. Is a uh, Real Tree Legacy. And uh, y'all can find all that stuff at Simmons Sporting Goods, Banded Real Tree, all the websites. And yep. Cole, you want to put your hat from the you can see and Frog Togs dot com. There you go, Kevin. Frog talk, Kevin. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's gonna appreciate that. Mm-hmm. That's when, the way y'all Ke- mess me when you're on your turkey hunt. Yeah, we did <laughs> mess with you a little bit. About your chair, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin's still. I, mean, like, I, I thought Kevin Kevin's was a literally over. 400 pounds of ass. What leaning made back in it? I mean, leaning back no, in no, it. No, it, what, it what, broke what on Kevin, about? not me. Three twenty. Right this morning, I was three thirteen. Okay. Thank you. You give me the extra seven pounds. Plop it down in my turkey seat and broke it. And once the now, hold on, made. I wasn't the one that did it. Kevin, was, Kevin sat in it and broke it. Well, Kevin's a big fella. Kevin's a big Kevin's old boy. A big old Kevin boy. ain't small. No, he was, big old boy. He filed a warranty claim. He said he hadn't heard anything uh, back. Yeah, he, he, he ain't filed gonna hear nothing back. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> For those Kevin, listening, call, call Alan or email Alan at Alan H at AveryOutdoors dot com. There you yeah, go. He'll get you taken care, care of. He'll get you fixed up. If y'all listen, y'all know who Kevin is. He's the man in charge at Frog Talks. Kevin Gentle, yeah. Mr. Alabama, Arab Alabama, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin's a good guy. Good, good buddy. Good, good guy. guy. Good buddy, yeah. Kevin's a good guy. Even though he shot a turkey out from one of me this year, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. One no, of the good guys in the industry. Got a lot of respect for him. And that's pretty cool that they both can say that. Kevin and Christian can say that. So, that's a good thing. Between Frog Talks and Bandit. Oh, yeah. He's, it's a. have always had a lot of respect for him and what they've done. He's a good dude. They're a friendly smack talking competitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I still, I still got a bar in my butt about that turkey hunt. So we'll about, talk about about that not being invited. No, no, no. Oh, no. no, he's no, invited. No, he no, won't no, go no, turkey no. hunt. So he don't do. If you think you're scared of snakes, that one no. right there don't do snakes, dude. He ain't going turkey hunting. He ain't doing it. Just part of it. it no, he ain't do. We've asked him to go numerous times. Texas. Nope, y'all can have that deal. Wherever he won't go because of snakes. Yeah, uh-huh. he's a snake freak. Mm-hmm. I'm a snake freak too, but I, I mean, tried to get him. turkey hunt. Yeah, then you ain't a snake freak. Well, not me. I tried Maybe to get him to come to Oklahoma with us this year. Just hang out at camp and drink and cook. I won't even go deer hunting if it's warm. Not out there. No, I'm not. Snake freak. Yeah. You don't do a lot of deer hunting when it's cold either. No, just when I get, get, when there's a good. Christian's one. a good. I, fig- I just goer. figured out why he goes to Saskatchewan and all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No snakes that's right. There. If you ever you go to camp with Christian, I am a great camp. Great mate, camp, right? great camp goer. There's going to be when you get done in the afternoon. There's going to be beer cold. The liquor cabinet's going to be full. Supper's going to be about ready. I mean, Christian's a great. If you're looking for a good camp goer, he's good. I am. Good. I would be a great member if anybody wants to looking for a member to add to a club. I'd be great. Can you, can you say the Cole. same about your ball? Cole. Yeah, I hear, I've heard you. I've heard you. Great member. Kyle. Yeah, I mean, y'all have <coughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's, got to, Jeff's got to get up there to Oklahoma and show Kyle and Cole how to shoot coal bucks. Dang right. kill them well, if you go off camera right now, that's about all we got. So, uh, he better get ready. <laughs> Jeff, better, he better get to teaching. Jeff don't cook. He don't clean. 
He just shoots. He just he he's shoots. Good at that. He don't wait. No, he's clean good at that. Animals or the house. He's good at shooting. I do all that and don't shoot. Yeah, good good memory. Good just memory. remember that next time. Oh, don't you good worry. Memory. I know. Good hey, I will I never shoot anything that shouldn't be shot because I don't want to fool with it. The only thing I'm going to shoot is a old mature big deer. A, sh- a sure enough stomper. Yeah. Are you saying Jeff like shoots stuff that shouldn't be shot? Yes. <laughs> He likes to shoot. He's good. For, we're in the ammo business, and business is good. <laughs> business is good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he sure does shoot stuff that shouldn't be shot. He does. I've seen it happen. I know. I've seen it we happen. We all have. I think we probably all clean one. Oh, yeah. Mm. Not me. I'm cooking. I have. Yeah. That's how I get out clean. I cook. Caleb has. I have. I know Kyle has. So. I, uh, I talked Hunter into – I didn't talk him into it. But we shot one. I was with him. He shot. But I got real excited when the deer came out on camera. And I really thought it was a big one. In Texas? In oh, Texas. Yes. Hey, dude, they will fool you. Man. They'll fool I mean, you when out they there, come no out, doubt. they're like this. You're like, holy crap. Yeah. Then you realize they don't weigh but 110 then your pounds. Blood that gets rack's not that big. And you shoot it, you walk up to it. And you're well, like, I'll tell you this. Where's the Kyle, deer I just shot? Kyle's, <laughs> got a, ain't it. Kyle's got a little bit of Jeff in him. Oh, like, does it? Oh, yeah. That's not just Texas. That's anywhere. I do. If he's got a rack, he automatically is eh, maybe a shooter. Oh, really? I'm maybe a shooter. Or, I'm 10 or 15 inches high every time. And oh. then sometimes I can him are the Me and him are the opposite on that. Maddie Wiggins said it best. Maddie said, Cole and Kyle, he said, they'll sit there and tell you. That that deer is too young, too young, too young, and all of a sudden, if they need one on film or something like that, it's a management deer. Oh. He said, "Well, then when you ask him about it, he'll say they'll go to spitting and sputtering like a Honda 300 on a cold morning oh. with bad gas yeah. in it." <laughs> he, he one of them. Uh, that's, that's pretty good uh, right there. I understand. Uh, what I figured out, and now we're getting off band, but I'd like to say this: I've killed three big deer in my life. That's it, three, and. You, you know, you, you go, obviously, I'm 52. I've gone a long time between those three deer, right? And you, I get to where, Cole, or to where Kyle is sometimes, you know, like trying to talk yourself in or out of something. Like, ah, I mean, measure, oh, man, his ears eight inches, man. I mean, you know, he's trying to. Mm-hmm. When you see a big deer, you know. that's, you, you don't know. even think about that. Nope. It's all out the window. You know, it. you know when you see it. It's like, mm. it's not, you're not trying to think about anything other than it's a, get Myself, right? Because I'm fixing to pull the truth. It's the it's truth, the and right. it is such the truth. And when the white tail, oh, and even it is the truth. When, yeah. And, and the thing that's helped me the most is like when I, after the second big deer that I shot, which was I just like it's like okay, if you're ever trying to talk yourself into it, don't shoot you no, because right. it ain't right. That's or exactly you're right. you're you're headed for disappointment. But I mean, yeah. even you if are. he's. Even if you're talking about a deer that's in his mid to high 130s, 140, that's going the other way, he's seven and a half years old, big, mature. You can tell when he walks out that that. that you know that's the deer that's you're supposed the deer to shoot right there, and you know it. Yeah, hundred well, percent. I'm talking about straight horns. Horn I'm not talking yeah. about anything yeah. to do with body. I have tried to talk myself in, and any time I've tried to talk, my, you had the ground shrinkage when you walk up there. And you're like, man, yeah. that's not the right. Ugh. That ain't what I thought it was. Yeah. Other than those three deer, when those three deer, when you walk up to them, you're like, "Holy crap!" I didn't realize it was that big. Yeah. You know, yeah. grow on you. Yep. yep, yep. It's it's crazy. That is true. So, you think about that. I'll think about it. Oh, he he we ain't gonna, gonna think like. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like it'll be like last year when Kyle calls me. I'm sitting there. It was it was gun season in Oklahoma, so it was sometime towards the end of the first split duck season here. I'm sitting there on Sunday evening. Just got home from work. Poured me a drink, grilling, looking at pictures in Oklahoma. I was like, hey, that's a pretty good deer right there. We ain't seen that deer yet. About the time I get looking at him, good cow calls. Hey, you look, I tell you, kind of breathing hard. He said, you look at your camera uh, over at the Muddy in Oklahoma? I said, I'm looking at it right now. He said, a uh, uh, deer walked by this afternoon? I said, yeah. He said, what's he look like? I said, hey, he's good. He's like, like, how good? I said, I don't you, you know, think he's a shooter? Mid to high 150s, 160. Kyle said, you think he's a shooter? I said, oh, heck yeah, he's a shooter. I said, that's a six-year-old deer. He's good. like, good, I just busted his ass. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, I remember good. him shooting it and calling him. Like, I really don't know if I shot the right deer, but uh, yeah. he looked good. But I think it was him, but I don't know yeah. for sure. Well, he keeps he keeps quizzing me. Like He kept on asking and asking. He's like, uh. 
well, what do you think? What do you, I was like, I mean, he's he's a good one, Kyle. I mean, I may I may make a run back up there sometime. He's like, well, you know, I don't probably, come don't come for that one because he uh, <laughs> he did. <laughs> Uh, That's pretty good. We need to take a break. Yeah, take Bar- a break. Bartender, you want to? Yeah, we're gonna take, take a break, break real quick, and so that the head bartender at Banning Holders can make us a social drink. chairman. Yeah. Yes. Every hunter is unique. Every hunt an uncharted journey. Browning's X Bolt Two is here, a testament to 145 years of mastery. Introducing the revolutionary Veritex stock, adjustable to your perfect fit. Durability meets control with a smoked bronze Cerakote barrel and overmolded grips. And the DLX trigger redefines precision with a feather-like touch. Precision, power, perfection for every hunter, every situation. The Browning X Bolt Two. You, you we were, come over and eat next time we do it. I can't do it prime rib, or I would. I used to love it. Yeah, you, Cole, be his last meal. Yeah. If he, uh, yeah. if you fed him a whole prime rib, he yeah. fall over on Boy, you. Boy, I do a lot of wings, a lot of pork chops, and a lot of ribs. That's now we've done cool. like talking about the horse because I love horseradish anyway. Like, oh, I do too. I any do. kind of seafood, oysters, bull shrimp, whatever. But Brittany makes it like any time I do a deer back strap or any deer tenderloin or whatever, anything like any kind of deer meat that we're going to eat rare mm-hmm. to medium rare. Slice it, it thin, dip it in that horseradish sauce, man. I like it. Oh but yeah. The, the Arby's if if you're going to if you're not going to make it. And you're gonna buy it. The it Arby's real horse strategy. Arby, yes. Yeah, I it's, love it. Yeah, really yeah it's, it's like real horse strategy. My cocktails gotta have a lot it's of horse strategy. It's so radish. good. But Brittany, so here's the deal. I'll just tell you this. Are we back on? Yeah, so we're back. So the we're, world we're, will know this. We're rolling. If I get divorced and you get divorced, I'm marrying your wife. Well, <laughs> you gonna have to. Rev's already. He's already. He's already gone. started on that about them damn peppers that she makes. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I told her, I said, "You got to quit the making banana peppers." Yeah, yeah I said, like "You got to quit making Dude. the dang peppers." Well, I used to. Re- right. I always yeah. requested that the peppers. Buffalo chicken dip was good too. Not, that is yeah, good. My point, not just peppers. Yeah, yeah everything thing. she cooked. No offense to my wife. There's about three, three to five things, three to four things. Caleb's is like well, hundred things thing too. She she cooks like three or four things. Yeah, it's good. Brittany, everything. Everything. And it shows. I mean, we got right the there. evidence. That yeah, was right how there. my mom was. <laughs> we got the evidence. That's exactly right. I went That's from exactly my mama right. to my wife. They both had about three to five things they cooked good. And then after that is, we didn't explore much. Man, she started doing them stuffed peppers. And, and I mean, I love them. So every time we'd go somewhere oh. for some whatever party shindig, whether Christian was cooking or, you know, crawfish bowl somewhere or whatever, I, she's like, what, do you want me to make a dip or something? I want you making peppers. I heck, after about the fifth or sixth time, everybody's like, you know, over there got their arm around her. Yeah, exactly. When are you going to leave Caleb's yeah. ass? So I was like, well, you're going to have to quit bringing them peppers and just get some chips and salsa yeah, next exactly. time. God, hey, dog. it's not like, Caleb, you don't need to come just send Brittany hey, with them peppers. Me and, Cole, me and Cole are in the same shape. We talked about this during turkey season. You know, it was – we'd been we'd been gone probably too long. And he was talking about wife being mad. I was like, yep, mine is too. I was like, yeah, we got a safety net here, Cole. Our, there is no other man that wants to raise either of our youngest boys. Like when it was just when it was just the wife and our oldest one, any other man would have took them in with that one, yeah. you know, great kid, whatever. Jackson and Lester are our safety net. Ain't no other man wants to put up with that. And so we're we're good <laughs> till they are on and gone. We're good. I we're mean, in good shape. They'd want to hurt them, and then the girls would get rid of them. So they, they're right. awesome kids. Hmm. But. No they're, other. That's because we're their father. Cole and I are their fathers. But and, they're straight and Wallace just, kids. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to. They're all boy. Oh yeah, all boy. I that's it. I love being like an uncle. I don't want to be the dad. Yeah, you already. Did I, that, I understand. You done I did understand. That. Oh, I've done did that, but Jackson, I couldn't handle him. <laughs> he got his own YouTube show too. He's got his own YouTube channel. Hey, what is it, more Jack? His, what does he call it? All Things all Jack. Things, all Jack. Things Jack. I said more Jack. All Jacks. Things, all things Jack. Jack. Hey, That's there something. ain't two people more fit, more, more fit together in the, in on in the world than those two. Hmm. I believe. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, That's pretty probably fun. so. That's no, pretty it's fun. awesome. There, there ain't nothing. About like me and Lexi, probably. Yeah, she's about the same. So you got before we before we end this, you got one other little business venture we want to talk about is Christian Curtis signature series duck calls. 
That's not so a I, business venture. I try that's not a, to well, I, I understand that, but they are available for purchase at Simmons Sporting Goods. Yeah, sometimes. And I mean, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes but, they are. So what what got you into what got you into duck calling, building calls? Uh, <clears throat> just man, a love of well, yeah. It was all, way that goes. I, way, I mean, way, I know way, you way, don't want to go way. too deep into this. No, no, but no. Won a, won a few, chan- won a few contests. Yeah, along the way, that was way, way, way back. Um, this is it, it, this is I enjoy this part of the story. So, um, I did the whole contest thing way back. But I met this guy. I lived in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And I, there we go again. I don't know what year it was. It would, I would have been like 25, 26 years old. And there's this old man named Randall Floyd. He okay. lived in Monette, Arkansas. And this is back when. Monette? Yeah. Do you know who I'm talking about? No, but I know Monette. Yeah. Acoustic Duck Calls was the name of it. Okay. And this was back, back in the day when Duck Calls really made. Duck call makers really made duck calls. Right. right. They, were, they were really – There was like, no seeing – there wasn't no much seeing. There was a guy right. sitting at a bar right. like this with his tools yes. and hand And I'm not dogging. Them. I mean – Yeah, no, sure. You know, CNC's, we have uh, yeah, technology, ahead. you know. But, yeah. but, but but back then, people were – Hand making yes. every call. And and Randall's call shop was like a – man, it was like a 8 by 10 portable building. Behind his house in Monette, Arkansas, and if you know Monette, I mean it's small. Oh, I mean, like Marouge, Collison, something like that. Yeah, yeah a thousand people, maybe five hundred. Sure. Small, small, small. Right on St. Francis River, man. Everybody there duck on it. Cool little town. <clears throat> and um, man, he took me in and and taught me how to make them. It was crazy, and and it was such an art. And he was so it was cool. He was so proud of every call. And, you know, and, and back then he was cutting them. He had crappy tools and cutting on crappy jig and every one of them sound different but they were all it was it was so cool and you just had to be there you know when he'd get off work you had to be there pretty early because he drank a lot of as he called them bushwhackers bush beer and <laughs> the later you got the worse the calls got <laughs> so you had to get there early but <clears throat> anyway that that's how that started a long time ago and I, I and I got into it and enjoyed it and loved it and start we we sold sold it to Rich and Tone. It was the Timber call, Timbre. Okay. It's actually called, pronounced Timber, but whatever. And uh, I don't I don't even think they make it anymore. But I started making them again. But man, it's like I do it. Not therapy. That sounds like I'm crazy. It's something you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But. When you got to make too many of them, then you don't enjoy it anymore. That's right. right. You know right. Right. <laughs> so sometimes they're here for sale, and sometimes they ain't. That's yeah. kind of like that's kind of like hydro dipping guns. Like when I got it on mm-hmm. like on my own time, I got time. I enjoy doing it. And mm-hmm. then when Cole has knew twelve, this. fifteen different things he needs done, he really needs them done in the morning. A couple of my it's not fun mm-hmm. anymore. That's where they need to stay is in your truck for until after tent sale. But that's true, man. Sometimes but, it's, it sucks when you're and man, you talk about. Even the hunting industry. I mean, I, I tell t- everybody what I tell them. Hey, man, how do you get to do this for a living? I'm like, do you like to hunt? Yeah. Don't, don't do it. Oh, mm-hmm. Everybody says that. Don't get in. Don't do it. Well, I'll tell you this. Even when when I am hunting, I get to hunt more than he does. But I'll even ask him. He, he, won't, even, he won't even go. He's working or doing this. I mean, it's got to be a special morning for for him to for even me? go. Oh yeah, yeah. Caleb not, too. If it's Every, gonna be cloudy and no wind, I ain't. Oh, going. we ain't even gonna get into that. He won't go. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Will not. I ain't Don't doing go. it. Because yeah. I mean, it's. I've turned into a little bit of a pansy from cold weather. The older I get, if it gets below about thirty degrees, I mean, well, all of us here like the deer, deer, deer hunting. I made this comparison. All of us here like the deer hunt a whole lot. Probably the best. It's it's my favorite. Probably well, duck hunting my favorite, but but. A bad day deer hunting and a bad day of duck hunting. There's no comparison. A uh, bad day duck hunting is is it's miserably miserable. Miserable. It's just not the same as going sitting deer stand. You see a doe in the yard and I said, oh, we didn't got see a, nothing. Yeah, I mean, you're like, all right, we'll go back. No, no, no. Bad day duck hunting. Bad day, bad day duck yeah. hunting and the ducks ain't there and the weather's the same. You're we like, done I ain't blown going back. No, we done blown a belt up on the side <laughs> by side. 
Yeah. There's three wheels on a the four stuck. wheeler. The trailer's got a flat. Yeah, run no, off it's, into a pit. Run, yeah, on the side of the side. We did do I that. Know, know. We ran off. We had a guy run us off into a pit blind. He was not paying attention. And Christian and I were in the back. Christian, me, and Christian, another guy, were in the back. And it goes in on the passenger side. And I'm sitting in the back seat driver's side. And I turn and like jump. And when I did, you know, I mean, I, with all my energy, all 300 plus pounds of me go to jump, something held me back. Like, I, and it was Christian. He had me. He's like, you ain't leaving, you ain't leaving me, dumb. <laughs> yeah, he ran off and ran off into the pit in the dark. The entire right side of the, I don't remember if it was a Ranger or what. It, it was, was a Ranger. Every it was, time it I was pump a crew that cab Ranger. Out, I think about it every time I pump it. It was out, a crew cab Ranger. Doing that. The good thing is Jeff is sitting in the passenger seat, so I mean he had a front row ride. He was down in the blind oh. when we got parked. Yeah, he was. And then you know everybody's like, well. Somebody's gonna have to walk back to the truck and get the four wheeler. I get to looking around like, well, I'm the youngest one here. I may as well <laughs> yeah, take the, take off. Now. I may as well take off. <laughs> oh shoot! But. but anyways, there are excited new things coming from Bandit this year. Like we said, Real Tree Legacy. Um, just in in Legacy will be available on all Bandit Avery and Taka. Correct. Yep. And then clothing wise, and yeah. and, and you know gun dogs, gun well. cases, mm-hmm. of course, frog, frog dogs. dogs as well. Kevin, and we can't leave Kevin out. Kevin, Christian has been sure to plug you, give you your plugs in this, and, and you gonna probably send this to Kevin. He, Kevin, you're probably gonna get an invoice in the mail from Christian for that. Yep. But whatever, yep, whatever. He's he's included. You. you got the bar tab this weekend. And then the new, what is the? Uh, I should know this. New waiters. What are they called? We got a Phantom X. We got another uh, black label. Which, for what it's worth, Devin Singleton said is the best pair of waders he has ever put his hands on, put on, or the Phantom X anything. Or the, no, the, the, the black label, the new black, black label. label. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's what Devin. He he and Beck both wore them last year. And Devin is the only one that I know of that is in the hunting industry that still hunts twenty four seven. So yes. I mean, if you're gonna put anything into any, you want somebody to test that Devin's the one. Yeah, any, anything he says. If you're going to trust in any of it, hunting gears, what to trust in. Yep. So He'll tell you about it. He's not afraid to tell you about it either. He'll be honest. Devin? He is not oh, yeah. afraid to tell you yeah. about He'll anything. Anything. Anything ever. So what do, you, what do y'all got going at Delta this weekend? We are. We got a booth as well. Um, we'll be showcasing mostly banded products, some Frog Talk stuff, and, uh, of course, Max 7 and Legacy, mm-hmm. which um, – Legacy in itself, just a little small tip. Yeah, what, what about it? What it was, um, I want to be careful how I use these words, is it was forced upon us to come out with it as fast as we did. It, um, <laughs> ideally, we wouldn't have, in a normal year, not have done it so fast, but some things in the industry changed, and all of a sudden, like very overnight, basically. So things were turned upside down. Uh, whether we agree or disagree, the hand we were dealt, and we had to make a decision, and Went with it, and, man, I still remember those days of strategically getting on the phone with Christian, like, within the next few hours and trying to see what we see what we could do. But uh, we will be just kind of – we'll be unveiling coming out with that this weekend, and um, it's been good buy-in so far. It's just going to be head-to-head. I mean, it's just going to be great competition going at our competitors and enjoying it and having fun with it and just going head-to-head with them. We've all played sports before. It's the fun part about it. I mean, we – like I said, I get no qualms with any of them, no beef or anything, but it'll be fun. It'll be a fun year, and hopefully we can grow on it and try to make ourselves better and bring our partners along with us in that. So it'll be fun. We should have a big weekend, and hopefully I, – I, and I may cor- correct me if I'm wrong, and, and I'm a Louisiana guy. But I don't think Christian agrees with me. I truly believe – I wouldn't that, say if I didn't agree with you. Yeah, right, he really <laughs> says, he says it quite often. <laughs> I truly think Little Rock is a little bit better. I'm a little nervous about Baton Rouge and the, the amount of people coming just because you're locked in down there. And, and it's Little Rock to me from a lot of waterfowlers is a three to three to five hour trip. Mm-hmm. Baton Rouge is a five to nine hour trip mm-hmm. for a lot of guys. So this that part scares me with the amount of people coming. Not scares me, but I, I think Little Rock's a great location for it because you're all within a a little but we'll see man i think baton rouge don't get me wrong baton rouge is a great location great town great food great people all that maybe we get a little different you know maybe it's a few different people than you would get 
being in Little Rock, or I even heard they threw up Oklahoma City one year. I don't know. Next year. Yeah, next year, next year is Oklahoma City. <laughs> next year? That's set in stone. Next year, I've heard Delta five Water different Fowl. towns. Delta five different Water, places. No, Delta Water Fowl 25 is in Oklahoma City. Really? Did really? I didn't know, know that either. No, that's yeah. cool. I, I mean, I mean what do you th- I mean, I just Cole's tend to plug in. You know, rock. Cole played. He, I mean, he went to school and played ball up there. He yeah, may as well have a Roto Rooters yeah. Arkansas right, jersey on Keep while he get, when he gets down there. <laughs> no, I love him. But I would rather go to Baton Rouge any day, but I truly think it's easier for people to get to Little Rock than Baton Rouge. He's still living in the glory days. Jeez. Right. <laughs> Blue 25. Blue 25. Oh, God. Uh, no, I – you know, I mean – I don't think – I'll just be blunt. I don't think it'll be as good a turnout as Little Rock. We'll see. That's just my opinion. I think that, obviously, Arkansas is the epicenter of – And it's a little more timbering. And it's a little more – it's in the center of the – Yeah. More in the center. But, man, you got to think it. This may be – I don't know I, the, the total stats, but there are some ginormous – Delta chapters in South Louisiana. That, that's why I said we may get that different guy that yeah. didn't come to Absolutely. Little Rock. That's why I said there's still a chance. I'm not totally saying mm-hmm. Little Rock's better. I'm saying we may get that different no, guy. You that, just said that there won't, you said oh, you're going to be blunt and there's not going to be as many people. I don't think so, mm-hmm. but I do think there's a chance to get that different guy, and that's what I'm hoping and praying you're for. You're going to get that guy good. in Baton Rouge that you don't want to ask what's in his gumbo, just eat it. Just you eat dang it. right, and I like that. No doubt. No, but I'm think, excited about it. I'm, yeah, I'm ready. So It'll be fun. It's a bigger venue, I think, than – than what uh, Little Rock was in. I, yeah, I don't think Little Rock's is that big. Uh-uh. And the parking no. is uh, – The parking's tough in Little Rock. Really tough sure. down there. And I think it'll be good being right there on the river downtown. And It was it, it was Baton a Rouge. great deal last year. It was freaking packed. Y'all had a uh, – that was, was great. I, ho- I hope it's as good. I do too. And hopefully we'll, – and, 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 you know, you're pulling for Saturday to be that good. You, that's my thing is that for people to get there on Friday, they almost have to take off two days of work. Some people. Day and a half. Same can be said for Little Rock. What about all your guys that hunt the marsh? You Lake Charles. Right. No, Lake that's Charles. what I'm saying. I'm banking on. Like, I'm just thinking like Gulf Coast, Lake Charles. That's you know, what I'm saying. Hoping we're bringing in that Galveston, Houston. If you get all the Biloxi area, area all the guys Louisiana, that hunt the marsh, you yeah. know, the South Mississippi, South Texas, South Louisiana, Baton Rouge is, you know, I mean, I-10, they're either way, they're right there. And I think it's great that they're changing it up, man. I think a different city, man, giving some love to some different places. That's great. I think it'd be good. Oklahoma City would be cool. I think it'd be great. They got Oklahoma City's new. Everything they got new. MBS is going there. Several yeah. other places. What? Uh, yeah, MBS, MBS will be at OKC. Next year. We got really? we got one year, more uh, February. I th- I think this is right. The February. Uh, semi-annual will be in one more year like it has then it goes to Oklahoma City after that it goes to Oklahoma City for like three years because the Dallas and the Fort Worth Convention Center are going under a three year renovation at the same time really yep and their next two choices were I think New Orleans and Oklahoma City yep Hmm. I'm glad they didn't pick New Orleans so we'll see I wouldn't have got anything me too gracious we do bad enough (laughs) in Fort Worth (laughs) I wouldn't have got anything but no but we do appreciate you coming on here man I enjoyed it. Absolutely. If anybody's uh, in the Baton Rouge area this weekend, come see us. Christian will fix you a drink in the banded booth at any time. Mm. Just we, don't, we are just, having a happy hour. Y'all having one? No, I'm going to come to your booth oh, for okay. happy hour. <laughs> right. I think everybody plans on going just don't come. Either. Just don't come early Saturday morning because Christian will be on a conference call. Yeah. Yeah. Christian will be, you, look, no. for, look for the champ show up about 11, 30, 12, something like that. He'll we'll, be in uh, there. We're having a happy hour Saturday. Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I think, in the booth. 2 to 4, I think. Is that 2 what to it is? Five, two, 2 to 4, 2 to 5. And giving away a whole lot of – having a chance to win some easy prizes, too. Yeah. And doing giveaways as well. Yeah, yeah. You did that giveaway. He cut that head around real big. Yeah. Real quick we all light. doing that. We all giving away a bunch of stuff this weekend. Yeah. A lot of money getting thrown out in product. Simmons is. Simmons Vortex, is, too, huh? Vortex gear. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Optics, any – so, anybody that comes in – What are y'all the, selling? Uh – so we're gonna have, of course, Simmons branded like the T-shirt hat I got on. We'll have our Simmons branded tees, hats, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll have some Swarovski 75th anniversary sale. It's up to 15 percent off on some of that Swarovski, you know, glass. Um, that stuff's not very good. No, it's not. <laughs> not at all. Especially if you like hunting low light situations <laughs> where it brings in a lot of. A lot of light, and that stuff will freaking sp- good. This stuff will spoil you, man. It's, uh, th- that's the only that's the only bad thing about buying a piece of Swarovski is it's hard to get switched to do anything else after that. Um, but uh, 
we'll have some vortex so vortex we've got a vortex shirt free absolutely 100 percent free if you come in our booth you get a free vortex shirt just for coming a, in there come in the booth you're gonna get a qr code with a coupon code get on our website put the code put the shirt in your cart put the discount code in it's absolutely free ships free holding on yards just come by the booth get a discount code and a qr code and you're in there oh shoot y'all gave away stuff last year i'm gonna go get a vortex shirt sounds like they gave away over 1,700 hats last year or something, didn't you? 1,500? 1,700 hats. Brittany's coming. 1,736. Brittany's coming. Brittany's coming. I started yeah. to get her to make peppers, but I was like, no, it would be no, 12 different that. people trying to steal my wife. Yeah, like, no, no, she no. Can make pepper I don't know. Ain't nobody going to even go to the show. They're going to no, go to your Airbnb and just I stay know. in the kitchen. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's that's what good friends are for. Hey, now you done made this where Kyle's got to edit this. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, Man, y'all just made my night. This is, get done. You got to really, yeah, yeah, this got to yeah. go. Uh, We're going to have to air I, tomorrow now. I, I say yes. Yeah. I was thinking that the whole time. See, that's how my mind works, too. And I'm like, oh, shoot, Caleb. You ain't, about all it this. ain't got to go up tomorrow, but if it could go up Thursday, that'd be great, Kyle. Friday? Saturday's the deal. They, they just put him on For, the Well, morning. Friday. Yeah, put him on the spot. So, yeah. Friday, so Delta Waterfowl opens at noon Friday. So, if you could have this up Thursday, about 2 no, we, that'd, we, be, that'd be good. That'd be good. Luckily, I don't have – it's not hunting season. I go into my camp. There's nothing to do there, so I'll, I'll edit it. I well, it is hunting night. season. Kyle's another one. He's about like Devin. He mm -hmm. is in the industry, and he also hunts. Yeah. yeah. He's one of those. I'll be in the wind. One of that's those. Sure. That's pretty good right there. One, one of those. <laughs> He's pretty good at it, too. Yeah, I will say, I will say, if you ever go hunting with Kyle, and Kyle wants you to kill. I, I probably never will. I've never been invited. Oh, man. Well, so let's get off this thing. If you, ever, if, you ever, if you ever get that far – and Kyle wants you to kill something, he'll put you in front of it. But yeah, I don't expect to get that. Good All luck. Right. Good luck. All right. Thank you all for listening. If you're in the Baton Rouge area this weekend, come see us. Canes River Center. Banded booth. Simmons Sporting Goods booth. Realtree booth. What I'll leave out. Kevin. Go see Kevin at the Frog Talk Yeah, booth. go see Kevin at the Frog Talk. All right. Thank you all. See you. Right. Thank you. Wicked Blend from Browning, the ultimate in waterfowl ammunition, featuring the Wicked Wad system, aerodynamically stabilized for greater downrange energy and extra knockdown power. Loaded with precision bismuth and plated steel shot that delivers high energy retention with consistent tight patterns for cleaner kills and easy retrieves. Wicked Blend from Browning, the best there is.